Okay, it's time to start. And uh, welcome again to Bible study. We missed out last week and uh, glad that we can join back again this week. And of course, Praveen will be uh, leading us today. Uh, just wanted to mention that uh, I will be out of town next week, so I won't be here to join you with study. Uh, otherwise, we are grateful that we can continue to do this. I hope none of us are getting tired of uh, coming in on a Wednesday evening for, for Bible study. Uh, but let's begin with a prayer and ask for God's guidance and his presence with us. Join me as I pray. Gracious, loving Father, we just thank you that we can once again join each other in this opportunity for us to continue to grow and learn, sharpen our understanding. Thank you for your scriptures that you preserved for us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that continues to minister to us and lead us. And today, as uh, we continue the uh, series on curses, as Praveen has started that, we pray an anointing on him and a blessing upon our understanding and listening. We commit the session into your hands. We ask your blessings upon it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, Praveen. Okay. Good evening, all. You all know that we have started the series of uh, uh, study on curses. Uh, based on Mr. Om Prakash's request. And last time we have seen the curses in the Bible, what these curses basically are. And uh, we learned that these curses are not like how we find, uh, uh, how we think the religious and uh, uh, as well as uh, people from black magic kind of people. Those are the kind of spells uh, that are released upon people. And uh, we also learn that God, our God is a God of love who loves his children, his people. He is not a God who curses. And uh, we have seen, we have seen various examples in the Old Testament, especially all, all uh, the most uh, famous of uh, all the known uh, incidents where the word curse has been used. And we studied about the etymology of the word and we realized that uh, the curse, especially in Old Testament, it is not about uh, wishing bad to somebody, but it is speaking uh, the deepest uh, loathing people they have for others or uh, speaking about the consequences of a particular, particular action. But in the entire Old Testament, except in one particular situation and nowhere this word has been uh, explained and used as wishing uh, negative and bad to happen to others and especially God never did that too. So most of these, uh, most of the verses where uh, the word curse has been used, it is talking about uh, God talking about the consequences of particular uh, actions or, uh, because of, uh, I mean, about uh, uh, the results of disobedience. Today, we'll discuss about another branch or stream from these big subject curses, that is uh, generational curses. We very commonly hear about these generational curses. And in fact, there are hundreds and thousands of ministries they have started in order to set people free from these generational curses. Okay, And there are courses offered by various people to break the curses. Training is being given to people so that they can break curses. Uh, especially uh, if you see in India, uh, especially in South India, we find a lot. Okay, a lot of people, they have started uh, the so-called deliverance ministries. Have you heard about them? People talk about deliverance ministries. What they do in these deliverance ministries, they will deliver the people from the bondage of the curses. What curses? The, from the bondage of generational curses okay the first thing is the moment people are convinced that they have some generational curses that itself works as a curse in their life okay it works it's all fear based i still can remember uh, i was organizing a program in ashirwal global learning center where we met for our convention and a huge program has been organized uh, by a famous preacher from uh, Bangalore, 
okay he and his wife they wrote a book called breaking the curses this lady spoke and gave so examples in such a way people as they are hearing they got scared of their own lives and they have to buy the book if you buy the book you can break the curses so that is a solution they offered if you are experiencing they have given a list of uh, uh, things that can happen in somebody's life or a criteria for uh, somebody to be being cursed and to overcome that you buy the book so they, that was a very good um, uh, business tactic we can say you know everybody bought the book there were so many boxes people were scared and they bought the books so uh, it, this business is going on everywhere especially among the uh, what we'll call i can say hyper charismatic groups okay the charismatics are good but i'm talking about hyper charismatic groups or you can consider them charismania who are into this charismania they are very prone to all this deception so let us look at bible and learn what bible teaches us about this generational curses so the first question we should ask as we are talking about generational curses is is the generational curses real is there any generational curses in the bible the basic answer in the primary peripheral level or primary level we can answer is both yes and no there are places we find bible in bible we can find references where the uh, this curse the word curse has been used and it has been expressed as uh, it is going to continue for generations but when we go and read these words properly we understand this is no also these are not talking about the generational curses the kind of things which we are talking about it is not like you know yeah, bad spell has been released up against somebody and it is continuing in their family for generations uh, the most famous word uh, from about curses is deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 58 to 59 this has been used by all this uh, curse selling uh, uh, preachers as the main fundamental source to speak about generational curses they where it is written if you do not carefully follow the words of the law which are written in this book and do not uh, rever god uh, sorry rever this glorious and awesome name the lord your god the lord will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants harsh and prolonged disasters and severe and lingering illnesses so if anybody disobey the lord god is going to send all these upon you and upon your descendants that is the word which has been written here and we have already studied this words is not talking about god is sending some kind of uh, negative a bad spell against his people he is wishing something bad to his people that we have already read i'm just sharing it because this is the fundamental scripture they use because you hear it is written it the all these devastating uh, illnesses and these uh, disasters will come upon you and your descendants so they say these curses are not only for the person who committed uh, who who disobeyed but it is going to follow their family and descendants also so um by in bible we see uh, both uh, we find that this uh, this generational curses are both they are there and they are not there okay uh, how can we say there are generational curses because primarily by some various scriptures reading them uh, like you know uh, just reading them not in the without if you did not interpret those verses we come to conclusions that these generational curses are there first verse is uh, exodus chapter 34 verse 7 where it is written keeping steadfast love for thousand uh, thousands uh, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin but who will by no means clear the guilty visiting their iniquity of their fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation here it is talking about god god is going to uh, bless thousand generations uh, especially those who obey him he is going to bless them for thousand generations if anybody disobey he is going to uh, bring the iniquity unto four generations so these curses will remain 
at least for four generations. Uh, from these words, uh, people have taken it and they very strongly advocate for generational curses. Another word is uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, the, where it is written, The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and to the fourth generations. So taking these words, as people say, they, there are biblical, uh, in Bible, there are generational curses. So uh, how does a curse look? The first we need to understand that from, as people explain about these generational curses, we need to understand how does these generational curses appear, but what is the criteria for these generational curses, according to the people? Number one is, if there is a continual and repeated a business failure or financial lack, then that is a curse that people say, okay? And uh, because in Deuteronomy it is written 28 chapter 17 and uh, verses 17 and 38, the grain you harvest and the bread you bake will be cursed. You will plant many uh, crops in your field, but harvest little because locusts will destroy your crops. So if anyone uh, is not experiencing a breakthrough, if anyone in their business, if there any, if anyone are struggling, uh, then it is uh, a curse upon them. But the question is how long, the period of time is not defined. So all of us, as we start business, some, some or other time, you know, we will be going through some kind of struggles, some ups and downs. And we know these all are very normal in our lives. But the period is not specified here, so people can take it for granted. Okay, so if anybody is going through struggles and fail once, twice, and thrice several times, then they, they consider it as cursed. The moment people hear it, they get scared and they want to succeed. They succeed in their life, so they fall into the trap about this uh, of these generational curses, and they give themselves into it. Uh, and go into all sorts of inferiority complex and they don't progress in their businesses. So this is a, one of the evidence, the people say that this is according to their criteria is a sign for being cursed. And second thing is consistent pattern of chronic lingering and incurable diseases because it's written in Deuteronomy 28 in the same chapter 20 verse 22 and 35. The Lord will strike you with disease, fever and uh, inflammation. The Lord will afflict your, afflict your knees and legs with severe boils and can be cured. So if anybody have any sickness for a prolonged time, then they are cursed. There are sicknesses which may, which we, for which we don't have solutions yet, and uh, they created a uh, you know atmosphere where if anybody have sickness for a period of time, they consider it as a, a being cursed, and they have to be free from it. That is so unfortunate. So that is, this is the second thing, second pattern uh, people say, and the third thing is. Uh, uh, there are some people, some have mental illnesses if and deep confusion and emotional dysfunction. If anybody is suffering with mental illness or deep confusion and emotional dysfunction, they say it is a curse. Uh, and the worst support they get is from the same book, same chapter, verses 20 and 28. The Lord will send you curses, panic and frustration in everything you do. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness, and panic. So, in fact, these are the words Moses has spoken. In fact, it is not the Lord has spoken. Uh, Moses, as he had handed over uh, the Ten Commandments and all to the children of Israel, and at the end of his life, he is uh, he is speaking. He is uh, threatening them. In fact, he was. Uh, he's asking them to uh, obey the Lord and to be uh, to follow his his uh, commandments. So as he is doing, this is the language Moses has used. Uh, so uh, from these words, people say, if anybody have mental illness, that is a curse. It can be just psychological or psychiatric issue, but they consider it as a curse 
and they pull push people more and more into uh, these uh, psychiatric problems and if there is anybody if anybody is struggle i mean uh, having continuously i mean miscarriages okay uh, bare barrenness and pregnancy issues that they consider it as curse that uh, they quote deuteronomy 28 verse 18 so if any sickness come it is a curse if any for which is long uh, it is a curse. If any psychological issue is there, then it is a curse. If any miscarriages are there, they consider it as a curse. And uh, because these are the things where people are very much, uh, uh, con they are concerned about and uh, they are very emotionally attached to these, especially when pregnancy kind of things and all are there. So they are the trigger points for people. And using these words, they easily trap them into the this generation belief of these generational curses and uh, and the spiritual abuse is going on in this modern day and another pattern we can find is constant pattern of failure calamity disaster or oppression if somebody is continuously is uh, failing then it is a curse and uh, they quote deuteronomy 28 towards 20 uh, 29 and 33 where it is written you won't be successful in anything you do as long as you live, you will be oppressed and robbed with no one to rescue. People you never knew will eat what you, so what your land and your hard work have produced. So the, everybody are earnestly seeking for a breakthrough. If anybody uh, is not experiencing breakthrough, then they are being cursed. So that's what these people teach. And another thing is, uh, uh, disaster, disunity, and calamity in the home. So one thing devil always does in our lives is uh, disturbing the families. Uh, so if anybody have disturbed families, uh, then they, they say that they are, this is evidence of being cursed. Uh, so they need to be delivered from those curses. So all of us want to have peaceful and good united families. So this is also very emotional and triggering uh, uh, issue for us, very essential issue for us and where we seek deliverance. So these are the patterns they have explained. If anybody have constantly failing, they're constantly failing. If they have a chronic sickness, uh, if they have a psychological issue or mental issue, and if there is a disunity in the family or if anybody is continuously failing or did not experience the breakthrough and if there are any miscarriages and uh, mental illnesses emotional dysfunctions are there then they call them as curses and uh, they say that they have to overcome all these curses and they go they take these people into this so-called this deliverance process uh, to heal them as i told you these all are uh, the curses that God is not bringing upon people, but these are words of Moses, number one. And number two thing is, uh, these are the consequences of disobedience, uh, disobedience to uh, disobedience to God. And they, these are lot, lot some words uh, that God has spoken. That's what we have studied uh, in the previous Bible study. But the, this has been totally converted into a different way and uh, people are putting, uh, people are taking uh, some uh, into uh, spiritual bondage about uh, these curses. Uh, so this is, a, these are the kind of things they, you, they show to you speak about generational curses. But before moving forward, I would like to ask one single question. You may, um, you know, think about it and you may answer it also. That is, if we consider these are the generational curses that are spoken by God, is there any one single experience in the Bible or one single incident where people experienced these generational curses for four generations at least? Let me ask you the question again. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm very clear. Is there any biblical example where you can see the generational curse. <coughs> These things are written that God is going to bring, uh, you know, curses unto four generations. Are there any one single example where these uh, curses were given for four generations?
the answer we find is in the entire Old Testament also you don't find in one place where the generational curses have been experienced by people. People disobeyed and they faced the consequences. They repented and God rescued them. If you read entire Bible, if you want to summarize entire Bible, the story of Israel and the history of Israel, two books can summarize come very clearly. Number one is Book of Judges and number two is Book of uh, uh, Hosea. These two can summarize entire Bible. What is the pattern we find? People disobeyed and uh, they started experiencing the consequences for that and God came and rescued them. But nowhere we find God is bringing the curse uh, from generation to generation. But these verses, they sound, they look like uh, there are uh, generational curses. That's why I said, uh, are there generational curses? I said both yes and no. If you read the scripture in the uh, uh, just uh, uh, what we'll call, uh, uh, if you don't do an in-depth study, uh, if you just read in peripheral levels, and uh, we will come on, uh, we'll come to these kind of conclusions. But the reality is, in entire Old Testament, you don't find anywhere people are experiencing these generational curses. And what does the Bible say if, if these generational curses, these verses are written like this? And we also need to support the counter argument also with the uh, scripture. What does the Bible say in Deuteronomy 28? We have read the curses about the curses and how these people are going to suffer for generation. Let us see just four chapters before Deuteronomy 28, what God has said. Deuteronomy 24, verse 16, where God said, Father shall not be put to death because of their children, nor shall children be put to death because of their fathers. Each one shall be put to death for his own sin. This is the heart of God. God is saying, God is, so God is not speaking that I'm going to bring, bring the sin. So God is saying that I'm not going to punish the children for the sake of the fathers. I'm not punish, going to punish, punish the father for the sake of children. Where are the generational curses then? And in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 19 to 20, you all know about the proverb very well. The Israelites use the fathers ate, uh, ate grapes and the children's teeth are at edge. Okay. Uh, so, and he says that's, that proverb is not going to work anymore in, in Israel. That's what God speaks very strongly in Ezekiel 18, chapter 1 to 4, one, verses 1 to 4. And in a, a chapter 18, verse 19 to 20, he speaks like this. Yet you say, why should, uh, sorry, why should not the son suffer for the iniquity of the father? When the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to observe my statutes, he shall surely live. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous, uh, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. So here we can clearly see that God is saying that I'm not going to punish the children and generations for the sake of the fathers, father, for the sake of father's iniquity. So these verses, they clearly say that these generational curses, they do not exist. The God is not someone who, uh, who punish generations. And there are some words uh, like, you know, where uh, we have already read, uh, if I will bless the obedient for a thousand generations and I will bring the curse upon the, uh, the disobedient for four generations. This word, we take it literally. This word should not be taken literally. This is a kind of hyperbole kind of thing. You know, God is not telling I'm going to, I'm going to count uh, province father as generation one, province son, province is generation two, province daughter is generation three and daughter's daughter is generation four. So my father committed sin. So all these four generations should be punished. He is not going to count the numbers. Okay. And if you count the numbers also, we if you just take mathematical, my father has done something good, then thousand generations should be blessed. And within the thousand generation, where does this fourth generation stand? Okay. So this is actually people have taken it literally and mis misinterpreted it and said there are generational curses. This word, God said, I will bless thousand generations 
and I will bring curse upon fourth generation. It is a hyperbole. It is a, it is a expression. And these are not to be taken with the numbers and uh, uh, say, uh, say that there are generational curses. So the God of the Bible is not a God who punishes children for the sake of fathers. And another thing we need to understand is during the time uh, in the Bible, we find there is a pattern that goes on. Uh, God was teaching entire humanity about his nature. And uh, as um, in the beginning, he revealed himself to an extent, people understood to an extent, and that they have written in the first five books. That's what Moses have written. Moses understood something about God. At the same time, he must have misunderstood a lot about God. After Moses comes David. David understood something better than Moses. And still he misunderstood something about God. After David comes the prophets. Prophets understood little better than David. But still they misunderstood something about God. Then comes Jesus. Jesus came and revealed God completely, very clearly. And there is no misunderstanding. He is the exact representation of the father. So he revealed the father very clearly. So this pattern we find in the, uh, in the Bible from Genesis till the Gospels. And most of these topics would be fit into uh, the, uh, this pattern. And one among them is this, which I'm going to explain at the end. So basically in the Old Testament, we find according to the heart of God, there is no curse that which we studied last time. And according to the scripture also, these generational curses are not there. But at the same time, these, uh, these, uh, these kind of sufferings were been suffered by the disobedient people. Okay. How, why, do they, why did they suffer for this? The answer is the answer we find is the reason for these curses. They, that itself will answer these questions. What are the causes for these curses in the Bible? They itself, uh, they give answers for this. Okay. The first cause is idolatry. If any family that has idolatry, it will be continued from one generation to the other. So when it is continued, they will not be able to experience the blessing of the Lord. Because whatever parents do, that's what children learn and practice. The number two is dishonoring the parents. Yeah, whoever dishonored the parents, they are going to suffer the consequences. So I dis if I dishonored my parents, my daughter dis dishonors me. So it continues. We all know these uh, stories we read uh, in the schools and all. You know, uh, how we treat our parents, the same our children will treat us. So this continues, whatever the pattern we set in the family, that will be continued. Later, people can people consider them as generational curses. And injustice and violence. This is also one of the causes for curses in the Deuteronomy. So if anyone, whoever does violence, they will suffer violence. As Jesus said, he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. We all know the stories very well in our society. Whoever lived by violence, they suffered by violence. And whoever caused injustice, they also suffer injustice. And uh, people who uh, spoke, uh, people in the Bible, we find in Psalm 109, verse 17 to 18, uh, people who spoke curses, wished something negative to happen to people, they themselves are cursed, according to this verse. Uh, it, is, it says, uh, he allowed to put curses on others, as he too was cursed. People, those who curse others, they'll be cursed within themselves because there is no happiness in the heart. There is always constant, constant hatred in their heart. That itself is a curse. Since they don't have a uh, you know, joyful, loving heart and gracious heart, they are not able to speak gracious words. So that itself is a curse. So... If you want to overcome all this, what we need to do is better speak good about others. We better speak good for others. As much as we speak good for others, we experience goodness. As much as we speak negative for others, we'll experience the same negative things happening to us. And immorality, incest and perversion. And we all know very well, if any family who suffered this, it continues for generations. Okay, and uh, somebody asked me about the generational curses. One best example we can give was uh, is divorce. 
if anybody divorced in a family you know their children who they who grew up uh, with separated parents they tend to divorce for them divorce is not a big matter it's it's normal and they they have already suffered the consequences so they they're able to live without uh, you know united family so they don't have these uh, sense so called to be knit together and any of these immorality or incest these things they come into the family and they are going to disturb the family not just one generation they are going to disturb for few generations these are the consequences what I, whatever i have spoken till now these are the consequences these are not the curses that god brings but uh, these are given as the causes of curses in the bible and cheating god not giving whatever what belongs to god we know the words very well from malachi chapter 3 verse 8 and 9 those who do not give to god they will be cursed according to uh, the script uh, according to scripture in other words uh, this is uh, this is a language the prophets have used to say that uh, the causes of curses is cheating god and not giving what belongs to god what happens if we don't give to god the thing we, when we don't give what belongs to god we become more and more greedy okay the greed itself is a curse for us okay and this is expressed as a cause of curse so when we are when we are greedy we won't be able to experience the joy and uh, contentment so that that itself has been expressed you may have plenty but not enough because we are greedy so as much as we give to god it helps us to be generous and it helps us to be to feel content so people those who don't give to god they feel greedy and nothing is enough for them and people who give generously to god you experience in the you talk to anybody you do try doing it and see people who give generously to god they experience some kind of contentment in their lives it's because when we give we will be free from greed and illegitimacy uh, in the birth or in anything whatever happens in the families uh, you know the ch children who are born outside the marriage or whatever these are the causes of uh, uh, curses they mention uh, sorry that are mentioned in the bible but uh, uh, this kind of situation uh, children who are born out of the marriage definitely they will suffer for a couple of generations for uh, uh, for this particular uh, disobedience this is not a curse that god is bringing upon them but this is a consequence so whatever we have seen these kind of uh, whatever the list we have seen about the causes of curses these are speaking about uh, the suffering that is following these acts is not as a curse but as a consequence which are going to have impact on uh, more than one generation that's what uh, we understand from the bible so according to what we have seen till now we understand that there are no generational curses as such that god is going to implement uh, god is going to put on people but these are the consequences of various serious uh, disobediences which are going to continue for more than one generation these are the consequences only and one more words i would like to uh, uh, so, sorry i would like to give you uh, how uh, how these things are working uh, it is because because of two things these generational curses will work by psychologically people who ever believe they will be trapped into believing uh, i have be, i have generational curses and they suffer uh, or they go through all these spiritual abuse and all and uh, second thing is as i told you the generational curses that basically are they are not there uh, they are called as generational curses in the religious language uh, but these are like you know the consequences that continued that followed a couple of generation after speaking this i would like to give you the better definition for generational curses according to my limited understanding the better definition for generational curses is sin running through family lines generation these are not some kind of vows or spells god gave on people who disobeyed but these are sin running through family lines today we call them as addictions they go through family lines 
and genetic issues this definitely uh, this is a, a consequence of sin uh, we can find they started from uh, starting from eden garden and diseases alcohol and drunkenness all these things people call generational curses but basically these all are uh, the habits and the, these all are sin that running through family lines but they are not as religious spells against any disobedient uh, people and the foundation for all these uh, uh, people's this deliverance business is to may is uh, like you know there are four things the, the uh, these four are the foundation for this business number one is uh, they call uh, uh, curses conveyed by spoken words if anybody spoke negative about them that is a curse for them so with that they are intimidating people and uh, and these words are going to affect more than just one individual but few generations and they will be passed from generation to generation and at last the solution is that these curses can be nullified how these curses can be nullified and they say you come and attend our three days program so that your curses will be removed so uh, believing that it's because of the spoken word some case, uh, curse came against me <coughs> and uh, and these are going to continue for generations and this can be uh, reversed by some kind of spiritual activity uh, this is the main uh, foundation for them to uh, lead people into all sorts of um, what spiritual abuse so from what we have discussed uh, the major points we studied are these number one in the bible we find uh, there are references about generational curses and in the bible we find the causes of curses when we study these two we understand that there are no generational curses but these generational curses are nothing but the sin is running through the family lines a disobedience that happened with one person in the family that continued through the family life these are the generational curses we find if you look at these verses clearly and that is the very reason in john chapter 9 we find uh, when there was a blind man the disciples asked jesus who sin is this that this man was born blind then jesus said to him this is not the sin of anybody but it is for the glory of god through which jesus was telling there are no generational curses because of no one sin somebody uh, was born uh, blind or anything there are no generational curses but this is for the glory of god whatever the suffering is there whatever the situation is there even it looks like when sin is flowing through the family lines it looks as something that is beyond our control the answer is this jesus is a solution for this and he can turn this for the glory of god that's what we understand if you read john chapter 9 especially the event of uh, uh, jesus healing the blind man and one last point i would like to say and close when we read bible uh, especially about any topic like this curses or anything what we do is most of the times we read from genesis till revelation with the 21st century mind everything we read common say as same but it is not bible is a in bible we find uh, there is a progressive revelation so when moses wrote about various topics and one among them is curses he used a certain kind of language the language which has been used in his times this language carries their philosophy their theology their uh, uh, their psychology all these so social religious structure into uh, in the usage of this language so moses as uh, he is writing the scripture he understood something about god but at the same time he must understood lot of things about god and the same thing uh, with david david is little better david understood something better than moses but still he has misunderstandings that's why moses said god is going to bring the curse unto four generations and in the uh, ezekiel comes who is after david and he says god is not going to bring the sin of the fathers unto children sometimes we say these are contradictions in the bible these are not contradictions this is a progressive revelation step by step god is revealing and when jesus come and he revealed it very clearly and said god is not going to bring the sin of the fathers unto children 
but he is going to forgive them and use them for the glory of God. And he spoke about the new covenant. We all know about new covenant. In Jeremiah 31 also same uh, same thing has been written. God is not going to bring the sin of the fathers and the children. And then starts the new covenant. What does the new covenant say? I'm not going to bring, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to bring your sin upon yourself. I'm going to forgive them. Right? That's what God speaks. New covenant is speaking about forgiveness. So God is not going to let this sin pass through the families, through his cross. He put an end. That's why scripture says, uh, uh, Jesus uh, he has become curse for us so that he may set us free from the curses. So with Jesus, the, he put an end to all the curses. Through forgiveness, he is not going to let this sin pass through the family lines. So what are generational curses? Basically, the word generational curses has been used in the Bible, but generational curses are basically, they, are, they don't exist. But because of particular actions, the sin will go pass through the family lines, which can be considered as this uh, in religious words as generational curses. That is what I try to communicate all this time. So if you have any questions or if you want to add anything, if you have any doubts, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and uh, speak. I guess while you are all thinking, maybe I'll just add uh, just a thought. Uh, two points that Praveen you brought out. Uh, I think uh, they are very very helpful in clarifying how you mentioned. Uh, uh, Moses talks about thousand generations and four generations, right? Uh, and that I think what you said is very very helpful. Uh, it's a figure of speech. It is not literal, right? Uh, do you, are you following me? Uh, yeah, right. So it's, it's a figure of speech, it's not literal. Uh, literal must always be taken according to the context. Uh, we must not take everything literal. Uh, it's very strange how we take some things literal and we don't take other things literal. For example, <laughs> for example, uh, Mr. Rao will relate to this. Uh, when we read the fourth commandment, we don't take things literally there. But yet when we read about curses, we take it literally, thousand generations and four generations. So, um, and another thing I'd like to mention about that is that thousand generations and four generations is actually showing the nature of God. God is so gracious that he is willing to bless, right? He is more willing to bless rather than punish. And I feel that the, the contrast of thousand and four is actually revealing how God so eager, so desirous of helping and blessing us rather than putting us into, you know, all kinds of trouble or punishment. You know? So I thought that was a very good point. And another point you brought up also was very, very uh, helpful. And that is those who have a cursing mentality, those who curse reveals actually a mindset. And I think uh, Praveen, you mentioned that quite helpful. And I feel that those who have this proclivity to curse are actually showing a sense of hatred, a sense of detestation, a tense of abhorrence. It's actually revealing their mindset. Uh, and uh, in one sense, I would say that's a, a, a adversarial mindset. It's a demonic mindset, you know, those who go into cursings. And so uh, God does not want us to have such a mindset because he himself doesn't have such a mindset. I just thought I'll throw those few things out as I was listening uh, to the study. Any questions? I guess you all are still thinking. <laughs> Maybe I'll throw a question here. Uh, 
you know, uh, there are some who believe that certain diseases are passed on. For example, diabetes. They say that if your grandfather or father had diabetes, you, are, you have more of a proclivity to have diabetes. Uh, and, uh, you know, say mental illness can be passed on from, you know, somebody in the family to down uh, the generation. How would we, how would we look at that, uh, Praveen? Do you have any thoughts on that? Basically, all these sicknesses, they are consequences of sin. And uh, I guess uh, even death is a sickness. We are dying, slowly we are dying. Uh, each and every cell in our body is slowly becoming weak and dying. These all are consequences of the sin from uh, Eden Garden. I guess we should take these also as part of it. Okay. So what you're saying is... Uh, um, in, uh, the uh, the brokenness of humanity, uh, the sin sinfulness has passed on to all humanity, and we hence suffer the consequences of that sin that brokenness that comes through sinfulness. Yes. Even better word we can say is rather than sinfulness, we can consider uh, the consequence of sin. Uh, sinfulness again, it mean a different thing. You know. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anybody ask any questions or comments? Yes, Bertie, go ahead. Uh, God mentions uh, uh, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is healing. Uh, am I right? Yes. Uh, yeah, a healing ministry. And uh, God says that uh, uh, as a God of love and mercy and gracious that he is, uh, he gives relief to us, to brokenness, to the brokenness of man uh, because of uh, consequence of sin uh, that has come down. But he does provide, say, you know, gives relief through doctors, through medicine. God says, I mean, he, you know, he does that. And also healing is one of the things that he gives relief. What do you have to say about that, uh, Pastor Praveen, about the healing? Uh, you're talking about the deliverance ministry. Uh, could we take uh, deliverance and healing? Uh, could, he, could we say people are anointed with the healing? I know they're having the gift of healing. They're anointed uh, and uh, to, you know, to provide healing and provide deliverance. Definitely, uh, healing is a gift that God has given to us, and there is no doubt about it, and all of us, we need it. But there is nothing called a healing ministry as such. All these are gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are given for the edification of the church. Sure. These gifts are given not to build a Baraka healing center or Baraka deliverance center. These are not for that. These are to edify the church. Okay, so there are times we may require healing and God, he does that through his chosen people who are given the gift of healing. And even the people who receive the gift of healing, there are times people are not healed. So these healings and miracles, they work according to the plan and purpose of God. And one thing we need to understand, whatever the we may, script, uh, spiritual gift we use, if we are not using it for the edification of the church, but building our own empires and kingdom like healing centers, hospitals or whatever things, then that is not Christian ministry. So uh, definitely there is a healing and there is deliverance things, but not like uh, deliverance. See, look at this, this deliverance ministry who are delivering people from for generational curses. Uh, these people, whoever attend these churches know for a lifetime, they require uh, deliverance. One time they need a deliverance from sickness. One time they need deliverance from psychological issues. Another time they need a deliverance from their continuous failure. So each and every problem we have, a difficulty we have, they have, uh, they called it is a generational curses for lifetime. These people are going through for deliver deliverance, and they are being bonded. They are being put into spiritual bondage actually. 
So uh, this deliverance ministry, these kind of ministries, they are not working for the edification of the church, but they are weakening the church. So any healing or deliverance ministries that edifies the church, a person came who got deliverance and he should be free and he should be active member in the church. If that is not happening, a healthy and happy person is not the result. So we are not delivering people, but putting more and more, uh, putting them more and more into bondage. So uh, this usage of gifts should be used carefully, especially with the goal of edifying the church. That's my opinion. Thank you. Franklin, you had a thought? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One. Sir, uh, the Apostle Paul, sir, makes one uh, statement, sir. Uh, uh, he writes, I remember correct, if I'm wrong, if I'm correctly remember, he has done me much harm. The Lord reward him according to his works. Is Paul judging the, is, uh, the, that particular person or is he pronouncing a judgment? Maybe you're asking if Paul cursed him. Is that what you're asking? Uh, no, sir. Uh, sometimes I hear a comment, you should not judge others. Is Paul judging the people who have done bad things, harmed him? And is Paul passing a judgment on them? I guess the word judge, judging has to be defined very carefully, uncle. Uh, when, scripture, when Jesus said, judge not lest to be judged, uh, I don't think that is the kind of judgment uh, Paul is doing here. J here, when Jesus said, judge not lest to be judged, means uh, condemning people and saying, you are an idiot, you are useful for nothing. These kind of judgments we pass on, right? So those things should not be done. That's what uh, Jesus was telling. And at the same time, Apostle Paul says, he who judges himself will not come in for come for, come for judgment. And discernment, the word discernment also again, is another word which can be used for judgment. Okay, looking at a person, his activities, things and all, and we create, we get an opinion about a person, that's, that's also can be considered as judgment. So I don't think uh, these two judgments are the same. Uh, Apostle Paul, when he spoke about these, I don't think this is related to uh, Matthew 7, 7, where Jesus said, judge not less to be judged. Uh, you are on mute, Uncle. Uh, sir, uh, can we say that uh, Paul is uh, passing a curse? No, not a curse, obviously. If it is not a judgment, then obviously it's not a curse. So the, I think the exact statement is, uh, he has done me much harm, the Lord reward him according to his works. Uh, he, that is a good thing we need to learn. Uh, I feel that word tells me more like he, ha he harmed me much. But I will give the vengeance into the hands of the Lord. Let him deal according to God's uh, justice. That's right. Yeah. Uh, can I speak? He doesn't want to take a, a charge and uh, pass any judgment upon him, but put into the hands of God. Can I say something? Yes, uncle. Uh, that's right. Uh, in the scriptures mentioned that uh, the Lord set us an example. He did not sin. Uh, neither was guile found in his mouth. So when he was reviled, he did not revile again, revile back. And when he was, when he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed judge, uh, you know, the matter to God, uh, judgment to God. So as Pastor Praveen says, is right. And I think even uh, uh, what Paul meant was that, you know, Lord, you see and you you do something about it, you know, and God who knows people's hearts will do accordingly, you know. And um, he doesn't want us, yeah, to take the matter into a hand because uh, uh, we don't know the inner motives of people. We don't know the heart as God does. And God is a righteous judge. He is a faithful uh, judge. And uh, and I know he, um, he will do uh, the best and that he wants. Uh, that is, uh, we are not to take, neither are we to judge, neither we take vengeance. In our, you know, we have to take vengeance, but leave the matter to God. It's a beautiful thing and that we all need to, you know, need to know and grow about, understand and, you know, uh, and consider it. Paul was rightly putting the matter in God. He was suffering, 
So Paul actually, uh, the Apostle Paul rightly putting, he says, uh, he was appealing to the Lord. Uh, which of us uh, will not do that, you know, uh, follow the wonderful example of Paul, you know. When we, as a, we tend to, you know, when we suffer, we tend to uh, hit back or take, uh, you know, or do something, take the matter in the hands, so to speak. You know? But God says, leave it to me. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. You know? So we have somebody to turn to, and that's our God who, who does things rightly. Well, we, time has slipped away. We have, uh, it's already seven o'clock. And uh, I was just thinking when Bertie was, uh, you know, your comment, Bertie, uh, you know, we have been done much harm. <laughs> and, uh, and we hope that uh, we, we have tried our best to put it in God's hands. And Bertie, you constantly remind us, you know, let us pray, let us pray. And uh, maybe on that note, maybe Bertie, can we request you to close in prayer and uh, bring also this, this particular harm that has been done to us, you know, that God may be merciful and kind and lead us out of it. Let's bow our heads. Almighty God of gracious and loving, faithful and true God, Lord, your from the beginning, your word is truth, Lord, and you come to behold our faithfulness and truth. Lord, you know people's hearts. Lord, we are grateful that you, Lord, everything is in your hands. Lord, even uh, the Lord has set us an example, and this is your word is in our heart, Lord, and we, uh, we want to obey your word and following your word, Lord, and putting the matter to you, Lord, as you know people's hearts, and you will do things rightly and uh, correctly in your time. Father, we just thank you for the study uh, by our pastor Praveen, Lord. Thank you for using him, Lord, and uh, anointing him uh, with understanding and to expound scriptures, to help us to see scriptures, Lord, in the, in, uh, in rightly and by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to apply it and, uh, Lord, to walk in the truth as the truth is in Jesus. Lord, we are grateful that we are growing and uh, receiving and perceiving, growing and knowing and believing and trusting in you, Lord, as the scriptures are being taught to us in Bible study. Thank you so much for uh, this, uh, that you are using your servants, Lord, uh, Pastor uh, Zechariah, pa Pastor Praveen and others, Lord, to help us to, to know, for this is pleasing in your sight, Lord. Father, we do in our living, Lord, we have... Uh, uh, we have situation conditions, Lord, that we sometimes find it difficult, like uh, we are facing, Lord, with the South. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, apparently, Lord, uh, uh, things uh, in the past have not gone, uh, Lord, uh, rightly, Lord. And, um, and you know, Lord, which party is wrong, but, and you know, Lord, uh, oh, what is the whole, uh, what is the matter about, Lord? And uh, what uh, uh, what it is leading to the uh, in the the closure, but Lord, we Father in heaven, we want to put this matter in your hand, Lord. We pray and trust in you that you will bring about um, a peaceful closure to the matter, Lord. That you will uh, help us, Lord, uh, not to Lord uh, take matters in our hands, so to speak, uh, figuratively, Lord, where we Lord continue uh, to uh, Lord. Uh, to as it is, Lord, an eye for an eye, so to speak, Lord, but to be as you are merciful and compassionate and you are God of love and truth, Lord, we need to, Lord, express that in our dealings with the South, Lord, and you have helped us, Lord. It is just uh, now, uh, it's uh, almost, Lord, uh, getting, uh, coming to the closure point, yet, Lord, uh, uh, the, we are, Lord, uh, we find their behavior, their conduct, Lord, uh, as a lot unpredictable, Lord, as we see it, as a pastor um, uh, Zechariah has mentioned, unpredictable, Lord, and uh, hence, Lord, uh, we are wanting a fair and, Lord, a peaceful closure. Uh, there's nothing really, Lord, uh, that needs, uh, there's nothing, Lord, nothing to hinder it, Lord, yet, Lord, uh, they, it seems unpredictable, Lord, and uh, the matter is still, Lord, uh, not boiling, but, uh, Lord, it's still, uh, still, Lord, it's still like, uh, still in a like, it is in a, a troubled state where 
we want a closure, yet, Lord, it's a delay that is taking place. Father, you know, Father, everything, and you will bring about a peaceful closure. Please put in the hearts, Lord, to respond to our letters, Lord, to do things rightly and fairly and truthfully. So they are blessed and we are blessed, Lord, for you have uh, best uh, uh, interest in your mind, Lord, and you want to bless them as you want to bless us. We're taking the help of the lawyer, Lord. Please use the lawyer, Lord, to give us good counsel, Lord, and to help us to prepare, prepare, uh, as we take uh, our lawyer Rajesh Chaudhary's uh, counsel, Lord, help us to prepare for eventualities. But Lord, your counsel comes first, and we want, we trust that you will, Lord, uh, see through, see us through in this matter, <clears throat> bring about, uh, Lord, a peaceful closure. Have mercy on us, Lord, on both them and us, and Lord, help us to move, Lord, uh, in the kingdom work. Help us, Lord, to be able to live your life, Lord, to to live and share the gospel, uh, not only us, Lord, here in the north, uh, as but also the south. And, and Lord, bless them. We ask you to bless them, Lord, so that you use them for your glory as you're using us for your glory. Thank you for hearing our prayer and thank you for today's Bible study. We pray this prayer, Father God, in Jesus Christ's holy and blessed name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you.